Big D Entertainment, in association with Dipsy Doodle Productions, presents the Dave Holly Hour. Brought to you by Posh Boutique at the Bridges at 57th, The Sky in T, XL Chiropractic, Quality Nails, Jesse Moffat Entertainment, and Sonny's Pizzeria. The Dave Holly Hour features Sioux Empire Arts and Entertainment Conversations. A true lover of arts, entertainment, good food, and fun times, including an occasional Jack Daniels. Okay, so a few Jack Daniels. Here he is, Dave Holly. Welcome, Sioux Empire Arts and Entertainment lovers. Coming up later in the hour, we hear from Old Town Dinner Theater director Matt Douglas and actor Mike Richards. Old Town's production of Leading Ladies starts February 17th. Coming up in a few minutes, we talk to comedian Alita Wendells. She's also playing the ukulele, and we get a chance to hear a sample. Plus, we'll tell you who gets this week's honorable mention, as well as draw for another winner of Pizza with a Podcaster. But first, let's pop the cork on this bubbly little show. Time to grab your favorite beverage, lift it high, and toast it to being Thursday, a.k.a. Weekend Eve. Hey, the weekend isn't around the corner, it's here! So long, hump day in your frumpy way. We say hello to Thursdays with opening nights. The weekend is near and we can see the bright lights. Yes, Thursday, you're so hearty, we can't wait for Friday. So a day early, we start the party. All right, depending upon what you're drinking at the moment, will be dependent upon what time you're listening to the podcast. But no matter what it is, lift it high and salute and say, well done, to two very special women in my life that both celebrated birthdays yesterday. My sister is a retired teacher in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, and has always believed in me. Thank you for that, Diane. Looking forward to seeing you as my love and I are flying down there in just another 20 days. The other birthday girl is our oldest daughter, Miss James. Uh, We were lucky to see her a few weeks back, especially those two adorable grandchildren, 11-year-old Harper and Jack, who, by the way, has his own birthday coming up. He will turn four this Sunday, and he gets a kick out of Grandpa Dave being bald but having a big, fluffy, white beard. Somehow he thinks maybe all that hair went from one spot to another. It's time to pick a lucky winner of Pizza with the Podcast or everyone that follows the Dave Holly Hour on Facebook or Instagram is automatically entered to win a free pizza from Sonny's Pizzeria. We draw a winner each week, and this week we say congratulations to Leslie Parker. We'll be in touch with you, Leslie, to get you all set up with some jowl-dropping, show-stopping, thin-crust pizza. Pizza with a Podcaster is brought to you by Sonny's Pizzeria, right across from USF at 26th and Waltz, and Sonny's at 81 on South Phillips. Check out the very fun, incredibly flavorful menu online, sonnyspizzeria.com. Honorable mention. Oh, what made Dave smile or laugh, giggle, or just, you know, be really appreciative of something cool this past week? Well, that would go to a couple of cohorts, Marvin Ingalls and Nick Jackson. Playing at our wine bar this past Saturday night, we braved the cold to have a great dining and entertainment experience. Of course, kind of like those two, since we are all part of Midtown Coffee Radio Hour. They were magnificent, as expected. And the man that put the R&R wine bar, Ricardo Terabelsi, greeted us. And he even told me he'd been waiting a while to have Marin and her amazing voice back. And it was a packed house. So congratulations to Marin and Nick for being so great. And also for being people that I get to enjoy some time around in another podcast. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Later in the hour, a look ahead to Old Town Dinner Theater's production of Leading Ladies with director Matt Douglas and actor Mike Richards. Up next, comedian and ukulele player Alita Wendells on the Dave Holly Hour. 
Helping women feel empowered and confident is what Posh Boutique at the Bridges at 57th does while supplying high quality clothing that fits your lifestyle, personality, and price point. Whether you want comfy and cozy, casual attire, or something for a special occasion, Posh provides quality, selection, and value. They carry sizes extra small to 3X and have something appropriate for any age. Feel empowered and get confident. Posh Boutique at the Bridges at 57th. Ladies, when it's time to give your nails some love, get that extra special treatment from Quality Nails on South Minnesota Avenue in Sioux Falls. Manicures and pedicures that look great and make you feel fantastic. Zaya and Tony provide professional care for your hands and feet, whether you just want the basics or an extra special look with added flair. Oh, and guys, it's okay to treat yourself too. Quality Nails. Call for an appointment. 605-334-1463. The Dave Holly Hour. Like eavesdropping on a great conversation between two very interesting people. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, yes, I might as well just hit a button and put it on tape. Well, you know, that ages me, doesn't it? Might as well just put it in a little button to hit on my digital recorder that says it's always a pleasure to talk to Empire Arts and Entertainment. And one of the other pleasures is anytime I get a chance to talk to a new guest. And that's what we get today as we speak to comedian Alita Wendells. How are you? I'm doing good. Glad to hear that. And uh, so we have you here because you are a comedian uh, and because we've uh, recently gone through, uh, you know, the Snow Jam Comedy Festival. Well, people that weren't ill or didn't have to work went to Snow Jam. Mm -hmm. You had to go to work. I had to go to work. You had to go to work and I was ill. And so that didn't uh, make for... Party poopers. I know it. We definitely were. That is just no fun. But you have fun up on stage regardless. And uh, we're hoping to have fun here over the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes or whatever it takes. uh, Because we've got so much to talk about. And in fact, you shocked me as you were messaging that you were on your way. And you said, want me to bring my ukulele? Mm -hmm. I didn't know about the ukulele. Uh, I practiced before work a lot. And I was just playing it. And I was like, maybe I should have some yeah. yeah. Well, I love it uh, because I know that, you know, there is the ukulele mm-hmm, uh, in mm-hmm. town that's a comedian. And uh, so I, I was sitting there going, I'm scratching my head. No, no, they're not the same person. Not uh, the same person. Not the no. same person. Okay, good. Well, we've got all that out of the way. Yeah. So let's start t- talking about comedy to begin with. We have a lot to cover today. Mm-hmm. Uh, what got you started in comedy? Um. Well, it's kind of a weird story. I got started on a dare. Uh, my first open mic. Okay. Yep, I was in uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota for some work training. Uh huh. And I went out with this guy, and I made him laugh the whole time we were out. And he told me, "There's an open mic tomorrow night, and I think you should go up." And I was there for the week. Um, so we went out the next night, and I did it, and I got more laughs. I didn't bomb. Uh huh. So I kind of got hooked that first time, I guess. <laughs> uh, but uh, after that. Well, but like before that, I met Chris Fryer, um, another one of the comics mm-hmm. in town, um, at a music festival. Um, we're both sober. We neither of us drink, right, um, or do drugs, and you know most people at music festivals <laughs> might have done one of might the other. Might have done both. one, yeah. So, um, so we kind of became buddies uh, there, and I started coming here to visit him and see shows, mm-hmm. um, and then came and started going on stage, and then eventually moved here. But yeah. All right. So you did it on a dare. Mm-hmm. Had you written anything or had any thoughts prior to that, other than just jokes that you've uh, yeah. heard and repeated? Um, I I've watched I've watched stand up my whole life. Yeah. Uh, I was a really big Seinfeld fan when I was a kid. We, that was on my, at my house all the time. Understandable. So um, and just have listened to a lot and just kind of a goofball. So it was you know I kind of winged it, which is kind of what I've been doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah see i have a goal this year to actually write down actually write out all of the bits that i've thought about and so i can have a file and if somebody asks me to open for them i can say hey okay yeah sure and here's my list and i go to that and so forth but yeah uh i have uh, not actually written anything out i do write down a little bit of note yeah. on my phone you know because that's, it's usually, that, that's what yeah I you know yeah. We'll, we'll be out someplace and it'll, oh hey 
Oh, that that would be funny. Put that in Google Docs. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll write it down quickly, and then I'll come back to it later. Mm -hmm. But uh, mine was not so much on a dare, uh, but it was getting started by doing an open mic. Mm -hmm. Because it was one of those nights, I think, that at that time, uh, Zach was hosting them down at, oh, the Artisan Beer Place. Um, not Fernson, because that, but, uh, oh, I can't even think of the name. Well, that's how much it mattered, right? Right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, he kept uh, saying, you know, hey, there's still time to sign up. There's still... And then at one point he said, Dave. And I was like, no, no, no. And then I can't remember who the first guy was, and I don't even think he's around this area. So uh, I can properly say that that guy went up and he did bomb. So the mm -hmm. next time Zach walked past, I said, okay, put me on the list. <laughs> I, I can't be the worst thing here tonight. Right, yeah. Uh, no, and, yeah, so then uh, I, I got stuck between uh, Dan Bublitz and Skyler. Oh. Yeah. Well. So, uh, so then later on, I was taking a uh, an EPK class from Dan mm -hmm. uh, about the electronic press kit. And he says, you know, you got to be able to say who... Uh, you opened for and, and all these other things. I said, well, Dan, since you were on before I was at an open mic, does that mean you opened for me? <laughs> <laughs> so I got that going for me, which is nice. Uh, yeah. but D Dan's uh, great. He's oh, great. he's a, he's a yeah. fun guy. No doubt about that. In fact, he's an LLC now. Did you see that? I did see that. Yes. Yeah. yeah Dan Bublitz, he's LLC. In, he's important. He is. <laughs> I, uh, I'm headed, I'm going to, uh, Denver at the end of February. Hoping. I don't know. He's working on getting me in a guest spot. At least oh, some open awesome. mics out there, though. Yeah. No yeah. doubt about that. He performed in, uh, at Grandma's house in Denver this summer. That was a good time. That's right. You uh, did mm -hmm. a, a bit of a, a big tour this summer. Uh, a, and, a, and, a, well, a mini tour. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk some, about it yeah. in, in, in a little bit. But just kind of wanted to get the idea, first of all. You know, so uh, obviously you didn't bomb. So then when did you actually start, you know, writing some bits and so forth? Um. For the next open mic that was coming up? Well, there wasn't... Where I'm from in Minnesota, it's pretty rural, and there, like, mm -hmm. it was like an hour to get to Fargo. That was oh, the wow. closest open mic. So I'd go there occasionally. Right. So it was just kind of a hobby. Um, and then what it was like last... Last April? I think it was last April. I came down here, and I decided to do an open mic um, visiting Chris. And uh, Jamie... Uh, Tucker, Jamie Tharney asked mm -hmm. me, and she hired me that, that next morning for a, a gig in Sioux City, Iowa. Okay. Yep. And uh, at that point, uh, were you saying, wow, I'm already getting gigs? This is an easy bit. It, it was a little, yeah, it was, I was like, whoa, okay. I mean, I can do that. I <laughs> yeah. can, yeah, sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. No. You get the work, take it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at this point now, what are you looking for? Uh, now? Yeah, because you know you've you've done some opening and, and uh, so forth, and you've, um, you've been on a mini tour. What is it that Alita Wendell's really wants to do in her comedy uh, career at this point? Well, I've been we've got a few things in the works. Nothing, mm -hmm. nothing nailed down yet. Uh, kind of working on some venues to have some different gigs. True. Um, uh, in the downtown area. So, Excellent. Um, Club David being one of those. Uh, Zach's been helping me out with that. We're trying to get something set up there. Um. I just I just keep telling jokes, I guess. Yeah. Um we did a we did kind of a political show uh, before oh, that's the election. Right. Yeah, uh, I the recall. Free, a free show, that yep. was a good time. Um I don't know, just to kind of have a, have a voice. Okay. I I don't have any solid plans, I guess. But uh when you say have a voice, is there any particular thing that you want to uh you know focus in on? Um, you know, are are you one that wants to really hit politics or you want to hit uh, social situations? Well, I have I have a bachelor's degree in sociology, so I think that kind of shows up in my comedy okay. sometimes. Um, just I I have a little bit, you know, maybe a little more left leaning jokes than some right. some some comics in this area. It, it, it doesn't they don't always land well with all audiences <laughs> in South Dakota, but um, you know I have a good time. So regardless, but um, that I mean the state of women's rights here right now. True. Um, I'm not going to be quiet about it. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and that's another thing. But and we've seen that, you know, throughout history of comedy, is uh, that you know people will uh, go on to be you know a particular type, maybe a, a satirist, or maybe they're going to be mm -hmm. a political. Yeah, George uh, Carlin's my favorite comedian. Yeah, so. 
you know, how, how could how could he not be in that? Uh, I think that to John Stewart referred to him and Lenny Bruce, uh, and I can't remember the third one, but he referred to them as the Holy Trinity yeah. of comedy. I don't know and, if I'll go so far to get arrested like Lenny yeah. Bruce, but you never know. I guess yeah. I, I have it. It hasn't happened yet. Knock on wood. I guess. Yeah, but but it might. Uh, no, and uh, because uh, you are obviously uh, here for a purpose, because you want to keep being funny. And you want people around you to keep coming out and uh, mm -hmm. supporting local comedy mm -hmm. shows. And uh, what is it about the comedy that you find is just such uh, not just the fact that you go out and laugh, but as an art form, uh, as as, you know, a, a higher uh, piece of entertainment for people to attend? Yeah. And why should they spend their money to come see you? Um, well, I think. It kind of gets you, I, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of negativity in the world right now going, mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of a little uncertain, a lot of things. And I think it gets you in kind of a headspace where you can just uh, be present and enjoy the right. moment. You know, and I think that's important. Um, at least, you know, I have anxiety. So like, I'm never, I, I, I have a hard time being present, but I'm present on stage, you know, um, and it's, it's just a good uh, release, I think, for a stressed out world right now. Mm -hmm. Um and I, for me personally, I do a few different forms of art. And so I've been, I, I used to paint. That was my main thing. Okay. Um, and I've been starting to lean towards music and comedy more. Um, I I saw this comedian, the one show I made it to in Snow Jam. Um, gosh, what was her name? Sean. She's a ukulele, com ukulele playing comedian. And I was like, oh, I do both of those things. I should, I should write <laughs> funny songs. Right now, I just I, I sing emo songs mostly, but they're you know right. it's still a good time. But um, yeah, I I just think I bring a little something different uh, to Sioux Falls. Um, a little bit of shock, I think I get sometimes mm. from the audiences. <laughs> it's it's but. Um, you know, I think I feel like I've done pretty well uh, yeah. in my first year here. So I, I would say so, and I, I remember it wasn't all that long ago that uh, we had been friends on Facebook, I think, already. But finally got to meet you in mm -hmm. person out at uh, T at the mm -hmm. bosses one time uh, last winter, maybe the Jenny uh, the Jenny Lou Russi show. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, love her. Man, that she was is. that was my biggest crowd. That was like yeah. my biggest crowd th so far. Well, yeah, probably that, not now. Competition that, night was a little. I think was a little more packed, but. That was a good house. It was, night, it no was great. Jenny's that. great. Oh, I, she's excellent. I met her uh, in Fargo when I started doing comedy there. Mm -hmm. So she's just fun. That's no, uh, there's no doubt about that with her. And uh, you're fun as well. But, you know, behind the fun a lot when it comes to comedy is the fact that uh, there's been some bad shit that's happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, for you to still be standing this year. <laughs> in my opinion, is amazing. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm kind of surprised myself some days. I bet. But it's here, it, I'm yeah, here. Because uh, you had a son pass away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, obviously that uh, takes a toll on anybody when they lose a loved one, but mm -hmm. uh, someone at such a young age, but yet we often hear in comedy that, you know, sad things can also bring us about to having some really good jokes and so forth. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm just going to guess that at this point, there's no joke about that. Um, the, You know, it, not really. It, yeah. it's, I, I do have jokes. I don't um, joke about Jack so much. Uh, but God, he was such a funny kid. Like, he, he's, just, he's just goofy. I could tell. So, for example, I have this story. I'll tell you a little story All about right. Jack. He told me, Mom, uh, did you know that you could you could sing every Green Day song using just the word banana? <laughs> and I'm like, I need to. So he starts singing his banana, 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 <laughs> banana. And then we sang the whole Boulevard of Broken oh, Dreams song. Just but just silly stuff like that. Like he was Not just, just a really a chorus fun, or a riff or anything. The huh? whole thing. <laughs> The whole thing, and now every time I listen to Green Day, I just hear the word banana. So. I bet, yeah, and, yeah, and and memories flood, don't they? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I know that. I lost my father uh, uh, five years ago this April, and uh, it was easy. First of all, he was in his nineties, uh, and the last three years of his life, he really wasn't mm -hmm. who we 
new yeah. for such a great long time. Uh, but uh, there will be days where just all of a sudden something will hit and, you know, the flood of tears will come along. Yeah. One little memory uh, or uh, anytime fireworks go off, I know he's laughing in heaven uh, <laughs> because there was a time I think I was maybe eight or nine years old. And uh, we'd gone with the neighbors down to their lake home mm -hmm. for the 4th of July. And uh, dad had to buy this big assortment, which back then was a whole whopping $25. Uh, so us kids want to go out and, you know, do the, the snakes and the smoke balls and a few firecrackers and bottle rockets while it's still light out. And I'm standing over that uh, $25 box of assorted fireworks with a punk in my mouth. And an ash from the punk falls down and it set off. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man he was pissed that time I bet. but every time that you know i I'm, I'm go to a fireworks show now i just look up and smile and go, ah, yeah, yeah you're laughing aren't you pal <laughs> i'm surprised you can't go to fireworks shows that sounds scary <laughs> but one of the things about jack that uh you you do embrace then uh when you're on stage um well, he was he was so excited that I was starting that you to were do doing it. Yeah, and he he wanted to make my YouTube channel. He's like, "Mom, can I make a YouTube channel for you?" And you know, we we never did get around to that. But uh, um, I I've been working on kind of incorporating more of those stories, mm -hmm. you know, into my into my routines. I've been writing a lot. I've been, I've been on a break for about two months. I did the the competition show, but I've been on a break for a couple months. And just kind of writing jokes and just kind of making making my comedy more personal. Um, I plan on doing kind of working for myself more than with a group. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, you know, I, I'm, I've been writing some jokes about the stories with Jack. Okay. But I'm giving myself some time before I perform those. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be a minute because even like it just it's emotional. I don't know when it's going to hit. You don't you that's the the strange thing about grief. You'd think you'd be crying all the time, right? But you just never know when it's going to it's something exactly. something hits and you're just like, "Oh, one little spark yeah. of a memory and and yep. you're gone for that moment yep. then." Yeah. So I'm giving myself that. some time on that. Well, but. and and the other thing is, you know, uh People need to understand that uh, it's not a calendar type thing. Mm -hmm. You know, sure, you do have that. Uh, I I refer to it as the firsts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of the first for a year. Yeah. You know, the first Christmas, the first Thanksgiving, the first birthday. Yeah, uh, all and of I just those I went through, I just went through all of those. So yeah. it's been and, and that's, it's been intense. Yeah, that that's tough. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it gets to the point where it's maybe not as frequent that you think about those things. Uh, but still doesn't mean that they don't hit the heart when they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'd never thought I would ever say this, but I'm looking forward to that when it comes time for you to be able to incorporate mm -hmm. it even more. Yeah. Uh, yeah th th there's, because I can tell, you know, just sitting across from you, you know, uh, yeah. I, I see your smile. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, the, the heart that you have. Uh, for Jack, and it just, it, I have the feeling it's going to be incredible when we do get to uh, see that. In the meantime, what do you tell people that uh, you are as a comedian? When somebody says, oh, yeah, yeah, I know there's like a dozen comics around here in town. Uh, what do I get if I get to your show? Yeah, I would say um, some of, a little bit absurd, maybe a little radical, Um it seems like a lot of women just get billed as, as female comics, you know? Oh, and to trust so, me, I've, I've yeah. had a discussion about you don't uh, say the word comedian anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're either uh, a comedian or you're all comics. Yeah. Yeah, one of, the, one of those two. So I, I, I read one time that the definition, the, dif the difference in the definition is, is comedians do, they, have, they, they do comedy in, in multiple forms of media. So, like, they act... And they do stand up. Oh, really? And do, yeah. And then a comic is a stand up comic. Okay. That I I can't remember where I read that, but there, that's that like that's the difference. Okay. Do you consider yourself a comic at this point then, wanting to be a yeah. comedian? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just kind of breaking through I and mean, get getting in, getting out there. So right, but, and yeah. then eventually, you know, doing some more, you know, uh, 
somebody says, hey, we need an MC for this. Yeah, so something, could, yeah. That's not a comedy night. So yeah. I actually, I um, was asked to be the MC at Sioux City Pride uh, for the Vaudeville Burlesque Troupe. So starting to kind of branch out a little right. bit more. Um, working with them, I'm really excited about. Great but, group. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's one of those uh, that, you know, just a few years ago, nobody was really talking about. Uh, and pardon the pun, nobody was really touching. Uh, but, you know, just the fact that uh, there was this group of uh, burlesque performers. And now, you know, I, I wouldn't say they're mainstream yet because uh, we're not seeing them on the morning news channels and that or anything. That Supercon show is pretty big, though. But Supercon, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was huge for them. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, they've uh, been in a few other things. And they keep growing. And I, I guess what I enjoy about it is the fact that in their growth, they're also, in, in a way, educating. Uh, they're, they're getting a uh, community to understand that this isn't uh, this really nasty, it's not, it's vile not scary. thing. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, to see that, that that's coming along. And that's, that's something else that, you know, the, another, you know, political thing in South Dakota right now is they're trying to that's ban, right. ban drag shows. shows. And we have drag performers um, in Vodevil. And that's, you know, when I say radical comedy, that's, that's something I want, I plan to talk about, mm -hmm. you know, um, in different ways. So I've been writing a little bit, uh, you know, regarding that um for their shows um and i want to really support that community because you know i'm i'm the b in the lgbt community uh -huh. so you know i want to support <laughs> you know all that all that i'm the a all the alphabet yeah, yeah. awesome good yeah. <clears throat> lgbtq yeah how plus plus a plus a yeah yeah okay. yeah an ally yeah, yeah. The plus Friend, is the plus home. is the premium membership. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah. For nineteen ninety five, order before midnight tonight, get a second membership for just shipping and handling, <laughs> only an additional nine dollars and ninety five cents. Hadn't practiced that one at all. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't do commercials, do you? <laughs> oh, look around the studio, do I? <laughs> uh, so you've got. Uh, uh, you mentioned the fact that you're a little bit radical absurd and apparently musical mm -hmm. break it out bring the, the ukulele break it out let's hear something from the uke and uh, i i commented that you have a very nice uh oh you've got a nice that's like a mini guitar on that one it's a yeah it's a telecaster yeah, yeah. i love it cool. very very cool because uh, you've got uh, the the nice bag and, and I have this uh, fetish for different bags for gear and so forth, and I, I spend a lot of money on that. But um, when I complimented you, you said, yeah, well, you know, you talked about a particular discount that you get because you work at Guitar Center, don't you? I do, yeah. Yes, and uh, did the same apply to the uke here then? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so when did you start playing the uke? Uh, about three years ago. Okay. I've I've played I played saxophone and bass uh in high school in high and like okay. in, in beyond a little bit beyond high school, but uh yeah, just kinda started picking up music a little more again. Uh in the last three years. I always wanted to learn to sing and play. Mm hmm Um, uh, but I couldn't guitars it's pretty complex and I have little short fingers. <laughs> so I decided to, and, and singing while playing bass is a little difficult because you're playing rhythm and you're singing the melody. Right. It's, it's kind of difficult, so. All right. Well, we came, you know, we got the four strings and that we got is, the, the I, I love it. So. It, is, it is so cool mm -hmm. looking versus just the typical, you know, what did you pick up down at uh, Walmart for a ukulele or what did you get on a flight to Hawaii? type ukulele yeah. this is cool looking yeah uh yeah i have two the other one the other one's a breed love that one's pretty nice too well let, some let's fancier hear it. ones after I said, uh, and, and let me grab my pick okay gotta get your pick yeah yeah you know when when zach dresh needs a pick it's for his afro <laughs> when i need one is for my beard because <laughs> it's uh i do a little i do a little fluffing a little fluff in, there little yeah fluff in the curls yeah <laughs> I don't know if I should back. Is that oh, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. I could, I'll, I'll play. Do you want the whole song? Well, what just else do we have? Warming up a little bit. I mean, that's yeah. just a little warm up. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any uh, like Get old folk tune. style things or anything? Or um, well, this, uh, I have like a folk punk song I know, oh. uh, but I have another one uh, by a Canadian artist named Julia Nunes. Okay. That's kind of it's kind of emo, but like I've been I've been singing is kind of cathartic for me. I mm-hmm. guess uh, it's it's a good song. I think. Well, let's hear it. Let's try it out. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we got the applause in there. Nice. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, certainly appreciate you uh, providing that gift of a talent as well. And uh, looking forward to hearing more about that when you get back to, you know, uh, getting some things on stage. And mm-hmm. uh, really uh, want to enjoy that. Now, uh, about the only thing we haven't talked about so far is uh, that, you know, this past summer there was a, a little mini tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was a, a group of ladies uh, that at all, with the exception of you, you weren't able to make it that night, uh, that had been on the, this show to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, well, and, uh, I was at I, work. I, yes, you were. <laughs> Always. <laughs> uh, and you, you went out west, but uh, it, it sounds like uh, things maybe didn't go exactly as planned. The, the tour the tour went uh, you know, mostly as planned, right. I, I would say. Uh, a lot of big personalities. Yeah. On that yeah. tour and a lot of time in a small van together. <laughs> so it got interesting at points, but But uh yeah, quite a few of us still performing though. 
Yeah. yeah. And yep. uh, so we look forward to uh, seeing as many of you uh, perform again. And it looks like maybe uh, kind of Alicia's taken over a, a little bit of a, a new yeah, comedy? Alicia Alicia's a Buzzline running yeah Buzzline comedy Buzzline downtown comedy. Sioux Falls, um, and that's going you know pretty well. I did a corporate show there for her, which was a lot of fun. Uh huh. We entertained the Taco John's upper management. Oh, really? It was a good time. That was a good room. Um, and and how many taco jokes did you did you uh, tell? I don't think I told a single. Taco really? Joke. No. Okay. Yeah. I think Alicia told a couple of taco jokes. Yeah. Eric might have too. Yeah, you, you got to throw those in. You yeah, know? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. If you're working for a big company, they can handle it. <laughs> what, what about the, because you said uh, at the beginning that, you know, you did that on a dare for a an open mic. Mm -hmm. Didn't bomb. Mm -mm. When did you bomb? When did I bomb? Or have you been fortunate not to? I haven't bombed too bad. Su su that's good. The Sioux City open mics can be rough sometimes. Ah, uh, yeah. They're kind of, it's but that's mostly because there's not many people there but true uh probably uh this one time i had an open mic at monks and that was that open mic was still there on sundays i told a, uh, my cop joke not good huh <laughs> <laughs> I got the some proverbial looks. pin dropping the, the, yeah the looks i got were almost a little more satisfying than the laughter though <laughs> so so you knew you were. Yeah, like that, you guess. made a point. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Point, if, as no long as my point that. got across, that's yeah. okay, I guess. <laughs> uh, Lita, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I always like to end with a, a couple of traditional questions. Sometimes you answer number one, the first question, and it uh, means we don't need to ask the second. But when you're not part of the arts and entertainment scene, what do you like to be entertained by? What do I like? Well, I have two Aussie Doodle puppies. Oh, there you go. They've been very entertaining. Yeah. Um, Names? Uh, Zeus and Apollo. Okay. They're Greek gods. They're mostly yeah. dinguses, but they're you know they have good names. Uh huh. Uh, my my daughter Alice wanted to name them uh, Truffles. One of them Truffles. <laughs> So they're the Brothers Truffle now. Uh, the Brothers Zeus, Truffle. Yes, Zeus and Apollo, the you Brothers know, Truffle. Zeus and Apollo could easily be wrestling names. Mm -hmm. the, the Brothers Truffle. They do wrestle, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got uh, wrestling dogs now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that'll, that'll come after the ukulele show? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> just have... You know, I'll paint and then play ukulele and then we'll get the dogs wrestling and I'll do a PowerPoint about uh, sociology. You know, yeah. we'll just throw it all in there, what you the know, heck, variety huh? show. No, Very much I so. don't know. Um, <laughs> they're pretty good. They're both, they're both vision and hearing impaired, so it's been a little okay. bit of a challenge yeah. training them, but they're doing like very well. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Um, other than the normal puppy stuff, yeah. which will get better over time. Yeah. It eventually does. The cat's yeah. not happy. But <laughs> I'm happy. So. We have a cat that uh, would not be happy if any other animal were in here, other than herself. Uh, any other hobbies that you have? Um, I do. I, I mentioned before I paint. I do like right. body painting uh, and canvas painting, um, face painting. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of bring some of those skills into Vodevil too. Uh, the first show I'm actually scheduled for right now is in March for Pussy Power with them. Um, and where will that be? That'll be at Club David. Okay. Yeah. So you said uh, Club David's becoming a good spot. I yeah, yeah. I love that. But it's it's a lot of fun. I've had some. We good used shows to live there. on the same block, and we would just walk up there quite often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. good place. All right. Well, Alita, anything we didn't talk about that we need to? Ah, uh, I don't think so. All righty. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you uh, taking the time out to uh, be on the Dave Holly Hour. I'm sure it will not be your first and only time. I hope not. Yeah, All right. a good time. Sounds great. Appreciate it. We'll be back with more of the Dave Holly Hour in just a moment. Dr. Perry Langston and Dr. Corey Tooney know excellence is in you. That's why they provide you with excellent care at Exo Chiropractic, improving your overall health in spirit, body, mind, and will. Get results the natural way. Arrange a consultation, 605-332-9235 or exochiros.com. Excellent care for excellent people. Exo Chiropractic, located at 4309 South Racket Drive in Sioux Falls. Comedy magician and hypnotist Jesse Moffitt's right. 
He can't play the piano, but he can sure entertain crowds with his amazing magic and clever quips. His shows always make the participants the stars, especially when they've fallen asleep on stage. Uh, I mean, they've been hypnotized. Are you the party planner in your group? Then you owe it to your group to make the event magical, even if it puts you to sleep. Here's how. For booking information, go to Jesse Moffat Entertainment on Facebook. That's J-E-S-S-E. M-O-F-F-I-T-T -T, or call 605-929-0964. It's another Sioux Empire Arts and Entertainment Conversation on the Dave Holly Hour. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, just push the button. However you want to hear it, I'll say it until I finally get around to actually just recording it, but it is always a pleasure to talk to Empire Arts and Entertainment. Always a pleasure to have new people on the show, and once again, we have new people on the show, but it's a place we've been to plenty, mainly because uh, my wife and I do happen to be season ticket holders at Old Town Dinner Theater, and we love going there. We love the productions that to get placed, and uh, quite often we talk to uh, John Bow about that, the artistic director, the uh, the big man down there. But this time around, John's not directing the show. Matt Douglas is directing the show, and it's called Leading Ladies. Matt, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Uh, I am also doing well. And then alongside you is one of the stars of the show. We have Mike Richards, first time on the show. How yeah. are you? I am doing well. So we, we're all doing well. We've got that taken care of. Yes. It's a good thing. Well is a deep subject. Yeah, <laughs> and also a hole in the ground. It is. Yeah. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and start with the premise of the show, Leading Ladies, then, Matt. Tell us what this play is about sure. and uh, what's going to make it fun as a, a typical show that we go to at Old Town. Yeah, it's a, it's a farce. Um, the premise of the show is that uh, two down-and-out uh, Shakespearean actors are traveling uh, through Pennsylvania in the 1950s. And they're down literally to their last dime, and they find a newspaper article that states an uh, uh, older lady is on the verge of passing away and is looking for her heirs, uh, two of them being from England, and these two gentlemen happen to be from England. And so they pull, try to pull the old ruse of, of uh, going in and taking the money. So uh -huh. uh, part of the issue is, though, that uh, these two heirs are female. And so they've got to pull the old booze and buddy and <laughs> in the opposite dress. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> dress opposite. And of course, you know, love ensues, and because you know, it's a farce and it must. Mm -hmm. And um, that's kind of the the premise of the show. There. So. What did you say to yourself when you saw this script? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, the uh, when I first read the script. You know, for me, it's not as a fast pace of farce as typical modern farce mm -hmm. is. And there is a bit more sincerity to it, especially in Act Two. And so for me as a director, it's pulling out that sincerity and, uh, you know, kind of making that work uh, in the midst of, you know, the, the, the farcical elements mm -hmm. and trying to drive that, that home. Yeah, um, you, and so. uh, that is an interesting point that you make about it not being quite as fast-paced because right. I think we're all used to that when we go see a farce at Old Town. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the noise is off, uh, yeah. that sort of thing, you know, where, you know, the... You know, you know you're going into a farce when there's like umpteen million doors, yeah. uh, but this time we only have like what three? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. my! So manageable, yeah, manageable <laughs> doors. So. Mike, what? Uh, I, I know that you two are best friends. So was it just the fact that, well, my best friend's directing it, I better audition, or uh, what drew you to this? Otherwise. Well, the show needed some eye candy, so yeah. I absolutely <laughs> had to be there. Um, yeah. But no, I, I think uh, the fact that I. It has been since high school since I've uh, been able to do a show with Matt. Yeah. Um, so it, it, that was definitely one of the strongest appeals. Um, it's also a Ken Ludwig script, so you can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, and the show is very funny. Um, and I, the the cast that we have there is just brings a lot of energy to it, and, and so I couldn't turn it down. And and you are pretty well an alum down at the Old Town, regardless. 
Yeah, done a few yeah. Shows there, yeah, so they, well done. Done a few shows, yeah. and they recruited me to the board, and then then uh, somehow tricked me into being president of it. I have no idea how that <laughs> happened, but yeah. So they they elected by height, apparently. It, uh, well, I don't know about that. Harold Gordon was the president, oh, okay. so yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, but uh, in in terms of uh, farces, what do you like about those? Um, I think it's the it it is the energy that they mm-hmm. bring there because even even though this show is probably a little slower paced, um, it still has a lot of energy to it. Um, I I think you'll be blown away by the our two leads in that as well. Um, Josh and Alex, uh, they bring tons and tons and tons of energy to it, and they are the kind of lynch linchpins of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, any any farce is just by the physical humor is something you don't get to do with your standard comedies, um, and that's a lot of what we get to do in this. And you you sometimes read the scripts of farces, and you're like. Oh, this isn't going to be very funny. But then when you actually get into the show and you realize the predicaments and, and the situations that the, the actors are put in, it's like, oh, now I get it. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. And uh, this comes out next uh, Thursday, or uh, actually a little bit later, 17th, correct? 17th. 17th, 17th yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you, you've got time to get your tickets uh, yes, down at Old Town. And we it, are sold out on all Saturdays already. Whew. Yeah, so get your tickets quickly. No now. doubt about that. I tell you what, it's always such a great time. One of the things that uh, I love to talk about when it comes to going to Old Town is the fact that you have your own chef. Yeah. And, you know, it's not just the fact that, uh, hey, you know, they got a good meal and so forth. Uh, but uh, the fact that you don't have to pick prior to going to the mm-hmm. show no. when you get your tickets. You don't have to say you want the chicken or the beef or the fish or whatever. Mm-hmm. You can order it that night. Mm-hmm. It is home cooked. It is delicious. The desserts are to die for. The coffee is incredible. And uh, the service is great because it's all volunteer. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a wonderful time. You're not going to be sad that you had the meal. No. You know, because quite often if you uh, go to a a dinner theater, it's going to be catered. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is one of those that, you know, before you go to the show, better check mark that. Mm -hmm. So... There's a wonderful little restaurant yeah. that happens to be in Worthing. It's just that it's open limited time because yeah. it has to have a play going on with it. Old Town Dinner Theater. Right. Uh, and uh, what's always great is to see who is uh, involved in volunteering because it's a lot of other people from other shows at Old Town and uh, from other community theaters yes. uh, that are around. Uh, and it's just a, it, it's like going to a, a full theater night. Yes. When you get there. But when it comes to this show, it's uh, obviously, you know, it each time something uh, takes place down there, it becomes its own being, doesn't it, Matt? It does. Well, any theater event is, right. you and, know, lightning in a bottle sort of. And thing, uh, so. you get that uh, family feeling and that mm-hmm. gets talked about on this show a lot. Uh, so you guys haven't uh, worked together since high school? Yeah, Stevens what? High School, Rapid City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, wow. Guys and Dolls. Yeah. Okay. Our first show together, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. What got you, first of all, into acting, and then second of all, what got you into directing? Oh, gosh. Uh, actually, my uh, forte is probably technical theater. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I went to Stevens High School. Uh, I was... Uh, always involved in theater. My uh, your listeners may know Michael Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is my cousin. Uh, okay, he's Harrisburg director yeah. of Harrisburg and does children's theater in the park, McKinnon and everything. So, um, I'm part of that Smith line of theater people, and uh, it just it kind of fell into my lap, and it just you know kind of fit me. Um, when I was at Stevens. Uh, I was, you know, president of drama club. We had International Thespian Society. I was the president of the state of South Dakota for two years, and um, really, but my my forte was that technical theater. Our mm-hmm. director Pam Goff really wouldn't let me on stage too much because I was too valuable backstage doing things. Um, and uh, what got me into directing was I was walking down the hall once, and we were doing an evening of one acts. Um, for our state one act competition thing. So we had uh, four one acts and just walking down the hall and she said, hey, Mockin, which was my nickname in high school. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're directing a show. I'm like, I am. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so uh, I 
chose a great American cheese sandwich. And that was the first show I directed and it was at the high school level. And um, it was really uh, been kind of directing almost ever since. I uh, then went to South Dakota State University. Um, Nancy Wheeler okay. pulled me in there and uh, have my degree in communication studies theater from there, directed shows there. Uh, for various groups, uh, peer education groups and such, and then got out and I went into the banking world for a while and then mm -hmm. uh, in Minneapolis, came back here, and I was the artistic director of theater at Washington High School for several years. So um, that really, theater's just in the blood, and right. and that's kind of uh, what we do. Okay, I have to ask, how'd you get the nickname? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my handwriting's atrocious. <laughs> oh, and I could read yours it, end, and you it, could probably it, read mine. Right? Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, my, the first show we did, or I did, I'm sorry, at Stevens, was a play called Painted Face, and uh, they had us write down your name, you know, for the program, uh -huh. and they couldn't read it, and so <laughs> they put me down as Mockin <laughs> Douglas, and it stuck uh, as Mockin in German. From what I'm told, it means to build. And so it stuck that I was in a techie yeah. and working behind the set and building things, and it just it just stuck. And that's mocking the builder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he still calls me head mocking. Most most of uh -huh. people from my high school days still call me mocking. Except my dad, who calls you Machin. Yeah, Machin. <laughs> well, he calls me Matt Head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, in terms of uh, your background, uh, how did uh, the theater blood get into your stream? A uh, little different than his story. I, did, I have zero theater background in my family at all. Um, but uh, Stevens High School again, Pam Goff, um, took a couple acting classes there, um, got involved with it. Uh, I was really horrible my first couple shows. Um, there, It's a funny story there. Um, the the guys and dolls that he had mentioned earlier, um, I was cast as Arvide, who has a solo in that mm -hmm. show. And... Uh, my vocal prowess at the time was so awful, they removed the song from the show. <laughs> but to, to defend, Michael, that song's not great. It's not no, great. It's very but, true. <laughs> but as a, as a person who wanted to sing the song, it's yeah. still, uh, it was, it was a little bit of a dagger in there. Oh, but, my. Yeah. But yes. Um, so the, the, I, my, um, I, I caught the bug at that point and in college um, did uh, just about every show I possibly could there. Um, went through another couple shows where it was obvious that my singing was, or lack thereof, was, was going to be an um, inhibitor to my um, acting career. So took some vocal lessons in college while I was there. I said, hey, there's some resources here. We might as well take advantage of that. Uh, got a little better at singing um, and just kept, kept doing that. Uh, and then once I got out of college, moved to Sioux Falls because the employment market out there, unfortunately, at the time wasn't that great. But uh, um, did a couple shows here in Sioux Falls and then got into the banking world. That kind of sucked my life. Mm -hmm. um, got my master's degree and things like that. But I said that if there was one show that could bring me back into theater, it was Little Shop of Horrors. And uh, Sioux Empire Community Theater, at the time, now Premier Playhouse, mm -hmm. um, put on that show a few years back. And sure enough, I auditioned, got in, and been doing it ever since. So, Well, you know, as you were sitting there talking about you didn't have a, a vocal prowess, I'm sitting there going... Uh, I've been to karaoke with you. Mm -hmm. uh, He's and, won competitions. Yeah, you you He's have a great good. voice. Yeah. Uh, so I'm. Well, I'm let's not that, call it great. Oh yeah, well, so. we'll we'll say yeah. <laughs> you My have a better so than big. average. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's it's good that you found that then and uh, was able to get to back into things as well. Uh, what's been your favorite role that you've played? I'd say it's a <laughs> toss up. Ladies. <laughs> I think it's a, a, a toss up. Um, I there were two shows and I did them pretty much back to back um, at the community theater. Um, and one was Rent. I got to play Collins mm. in that one, and that one was probably the most fulfilling role. Um, was a good my, show, to, to to express uh, a lot of theatrical expression in that show. Um, but then I got to have my most fun role, which um, was Lonnie in Rock of Ages. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you can't go wrong with, with <laughs> hair band rock. <laughs> What's the role you want to play? 
Uh, that is Seymour in Little Shop of oh. Horrors, which was a that was a little difficult to be in that show and not be in my dream role. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's Suddenly the one that Seymour. Yeah, that's yeah. been his dream role for a long time. It has been. Yes. How about for you then, Matt? What's the show that uh, the, the most fun you've had? Hmm. And then we'll follow that up with what's been most challenging. Oh uh, boy! In terms of directing, um, that's a tough one because each show is a little different. Uh, I'd say the most fun I've had in terms of directing it, just because it's purely the show is noises off. Mm -hmm. I, I just love that show, uh, the set turning and and all that stuff, and it's really the, you know, inside the actors. You know, this is our world, and we're sharing it. You know, with with the audience, because it's it's it can hit pretty close to home at times. Uh -huh. You know, so um, he's like, oh yeah, I've been been there, done that. Um, uh, challenging wise, um, that's tough. I, I would have to say, uh, for me and and my students know this at Washington, but the first one act I put on there was the frogs. Um, which is uh, a Greek show, and I, it, in its entirety, it runs like almost three hours long, and I cut it down to a one act. In wow, forty five, yeah, forty five minute one act, and it didn't work <laughs> well. <laughs> um, nobody knew what was going on, and but I had forty students involved, and had to take them on the road and everything, yeah. and it's just like it. it, it it was a learning curve for me. Right. You know, before that I had been, I had done some shows at Sioux Falls Christian and one, you know, at, at the state level there. Uh, but this was my first double A four A and it's just like it, it, all directors I think have that. It's, yeah. It well, every show is a learning opportunity. And, and so, but that was, that was the biggest learning, uh, you know, curve that I had there. So. All right. So what's the urge? What's, what's the play or musical that's out there that, is tugging at your heartstrings. Mm, yeah. That I would love to direct. Um, you know, gosh, anything. It, it's, the, it's the challenge of it, I mm -hmm. think. Um, if I were to pick, you know, one thing, I think it would be Pippin. I would love, love to that. direct Pippin. Love that. Um, it's, a, it's such a great musical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was just listening to uh, some of the soundtrack yeah. from it a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I remember seeing it for the first time. I think I was in junior high, mm -hmm. you know, you know, back when there were such things as junior high, not middle school. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we went and, to West Junior High. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just uh, recall mm -hmm. thinking, wow, how fun. I mean, mm -hmm. talk about, and you learn about, uh, you know, breaking the fourth wall. Right. Uh, and so forth. And it was just so much fun to watch yeah. that. Uh, and then, you know, through the years to, you know, look back at it, research it and so forth. And I was as I was uh, going through the uh, the soundtrack, I realized that was Granny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Irene Ryan. Right. I was Ryan in the was original. Granny. Yeah. Oh, she's, my. Got an, she's got a whole award named. Yeah. I, I, in fact, I just saw yeah. somebody even that was going to a particular school and mm -hmm. uh, that was named after her now, too. Yeah. So oh, accomplished. That. Yeah. Very, very, very much so. But, yeah. you know, we, we get stuck on what we see on TV sometimes. Mm -hmm. Forget about everything else that they've uh, done. Right. And uh, we also tend to forget most of them didn't start off in television. Right. Yeah. Yeah, especially <laughs> were, back then. You know, yeah. And, and now you see so much of the trend of uh, everybody not just going from TV to movies, but uh, from TVs to movies, and then they all love going back to the stage. Yeah. Right. What is it about uh, the live stage and live theater that attracts you then, Mike? I think it's the fact that it's a little bit different every night. Mm -hmm. um, one, especially at Old Town, um, the one of one of the the blessings of doing a show there is you have so many shows to do, and each crowd is a little bit different. You're gonna have different laugh lines, and you'll have some night, nights where you're like, "Huh, I've How never did that heard not that. Yeah. I've yeah. never heard." Or, or yeah. they'll, they'll laugh at a moment like. I never thought of that as funny, but yes, I can see the context in this case. But yeah, and and uh, just a prime example, we had um, uh, when we did, and then there were none. Um, there was a, a a joke that a couple of our actors talked about how how um, nurses were so awful, um, but in, in that show there was. Um, a, 
not only there was a group of nurses there, but there was somebody that ended up choking on something. Oh, the nurses so the were nurses there had to help to... them. Oh. And then that's the night where we had that joke and it just <laughs> it got the entire crowd going. <laughs> Oh, I tell you what, it is a good time down at Old Town, no matter what show goes right. on. But farces uh, are seem to be the bread and butter down there right. uh, in such a good time. Uh, so uh, how about from your perspective then, Matt? Because, you know, as, as you're taking this cast through rehearsals mm -hmm. and you're looking at the different things that they do on their own, you're looking at the things that you've directed them to do, uh, and then you, you find that either or of, of what works. But one, uh, you know, Mike talks about it being a different crowd every night mm -hmm. and a little bit different show. Are there times where you're watching the show and going, hmm, what's happening? No, or... yeah. There's a, well, <laughs> even in rehearsal, um, I brought it up today, you know, with, with Alex saying, uh, when we first started, you did it this way. And let's go back. Let's try that again. again. Yeah. Uh, let's let's try to do that again. And both he and Josh, everybody's pretty receptive to that, um, you know. But in my world, you know, as a director, it's a collaborative experience. It's like these these are my ideas. Where do you want to go with this? Yeah. Um, you know, our our first meeting together, we you know talked about character and character right. development, where we want to go, what we see these characters as, and um, you know, I, I'm big when when I uh, am on stage. I'm big on you know you know coming with the ideas right give them the director and the director goes yeah no, I, <laughs> I don't see it that way oh, okay well i tried <laughs> but mm -hmm. yeah um it's it's that joint joint effort and i'm all about experimentation especially during rehearsal and you know we're gonna throw things against the wall see what sticks mm -hmm. and what doesn't and uh you know ho hopefully most of it sticks at the end so, yeah <laughs> how would you describe yourself as a director uh I guess I would describe myself as pretty open, you know, and collaborative and uh, inventive. Um, I guess I uh, probably not as inventive as Justin Speck over at Central and some of the stuff that he does. Uh, West River, uh, the, the man's kind of a genius. Uh, I don't put myself in that caliber, but I I want to see what each individual brings to the character. I don't want to dictate. I don't want them, I don't want to mold them so much as, you know, take what they have and elevate it, I think is is my bread and butter to that, so. Mike, is he spot on? <laughs> At the risk of inflating his ego, I would, I would add that he's also a little bit of a visionary in there too. He does um, bring a lot of his vision, and he's, he, it's what I like about his directing style is that he's able to convey that vision a lot, lot better than than um, some experiences I've had in the past. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, just. I, yeah, I. Whenever he mentions a suggestion, it's like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense in this scene. Um, I, I just very much enjoy that piece of it. What do you bring to the stage then? When, when uh, you know, Matt's talking about the you start off and thinking character development so quickly in the process, what do you feel you bring? I think um, I bring an interesting interpretation. I try to, like, I, I will look at what um, other actors have done in roles in the past, and I try to do something a little different. Um, like in this role, he's supposed to be from Pennsylvania, but I'm going to be playing him as a guy from Kentucky. Um, <laughs> so bringing a little bit of an accent to it, which I, I hope adds something to it. And 13 um, herbs and spices. There you go. <laughs> the colonel coming. So, uh, yeah. But yes. <laughs> going to be fried chicken. We're not having yeah, anything on me. Oh, we should have done that at the deal. <laughs> 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 that would have been great. Uh, Matt, when you are not part of the uh, entertainment world and arts world, what do you like to be entertained by? Oh, boy. Uh, I am uh, you know, TV, I guess, mm -hmm. movies. Um, I am a fan, and my daughter actually found it. She's a sophomore at Jefferson now, uh, doing show choir and theater there. Uh, but the the company that does the play that goes wrong yes. has on YouTube the uh, goes wrong show. Ah, and so it's so out of England. Of... And so it's uh, gosh, uh, probably hour or so, 45 minutes of, you know, just 
different scenes or different uh, little mini plays, but one X kind of they put on, uh, you know, called the Lodge and stuff. And so I like to sit down with the family, watch those. Um, just wonderful work from that company uh, all around. Um, I think they're bringing Peter Pan now to either West End or Broadway, kind of the uh-huh. strong Peter Pan. And I think that is also on YouTube right now too. So mm-hmm. uh, people can watch that. It's yeah, just I definitely have to look that wonderful. I, I would support them wholeheartedly. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other hobbies? Uh, oh boy. Um, uh, I, lawn work. I, lawn work and completely oh. redesigning his house. Yeah, oh, I do that. Wow. I'm doing my deck right now in the process of that. I like remodeling woodwork. Yeah. Uh, I, taking care of my car. I wash my car maybe way too much. Yeah. Yeah. He loves his car. I do. So what's the car? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's not a, worthy of his it's love. It's not worthy. <laughs> well, okay. But yeah. It's a Ford C Max Energy. So uh, Ford's first uh, kind venture, of into, venture yeah. into electric, but it's electric hybrid. Um, Mike has a. Uh, fusion energy right or when, it, when it's working when it's working yeah <laughs> right now it's it's at sioux falls ford yeah. uh taking up it's on vacation yes yeah. right yeah well so. we we just got our first electric vehicle oh, yeah. yeah it's called a snowblower yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 yeah i i have one of those it's called a sun and no. <laughs> all right mike your turn when not part of the arts and entertainment scene what do you like to be entertained by uh, it depends on the time of year. Um, during the winter, I mean, it's taken up a lot. Of, mm-hmm. I try to get involved in, in theater as much as I can, um, do a little bit of volunteering on the side. But if it's just a quiet night at home, I like the, the movies, video games, TV, probably watch way too much YouTube. Um, during the summer, I like to be a little more active. Um, I get involved with volleyball and softball and um, just trying to be outdoors as much yeah. as I can. Enjoy the the three seconds of weather, we good weather we get <laughs> in the state. But don't, and uh, don't how, about, how about any other hobbies? Any other hobbies? Um, video games, uh, karaoke, go out to karaoke quite yep. often. Um, so it's just mini performance i can't, can't get rid of that performance bug out of me so yeah, uh, yeah. he's got a good D&D D&D group going oh yeah, D&D. yeah. Yes, yes. oh yeah, another one okay yeah. Yeah. Just a lot this of morning. theater people love D&D. that's mm-hmm. for sure yes all right so the uh, play is leading ladies it's coming up starting the 17th mm-hmm. of february at uh, old town dinner theater uh, all the saturday shows are already sold out mm-hmm. so get your tickets for the uh, thursdays or fridays uh, and some do they have some of the sunday ones again sundays yes, are sundays. still available Sunday okay. nights, um, and then the final show of it, um, which is on the 19th of March, is a, um, a dessert The manic. dessert one. You know yeah. what? We have the season tickets, so we go get fed every time. Right. But we have been to that uh, dessert one only. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so take it all in, and uh, we wish you well. Break leg uh, for you, Mike. You know, we'll, we'll say that. Uh, and do we say that to directors? Uh, I try to break his yeah, legs. Though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> several times. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've probably accomplished that. Yeah. Maybe one. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I think that we're actually coming to it uh, in uh, either the very end of February or uh, first weekend of uh, March. Okay. Yeah, I'll look forward we'll to seeing see you there. there. Yeah, all right. Looking forward to it again. Old Town Dinner Theater. Lady and ladies, thank you, Director Matt you are wonderful. Thank you so much, Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> two first names. It's, yeah, I get yeah, called yeah. Doug a lot. So. Do you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Mike Richards, uh, always a, a great time to see you. And uh, one little other thing. Uh, one of your stars at this moment might be underneath our feet. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Alex's girlfriend is one of our neighbors. Oh, oh uh, yeah, he probably uh, is. Yeah, so it could be. Uh, well, should we yell at him? I, no. I think after we're finished yeah. recording, we'll stomp on the floor. Well, he, he, I just sent him a text. He hasn't replied yet, but uh, he will be. He dresses as Cleopatra in the first scene, so I just found his costume and I snapped oh, it to him. Oh, my. He, yeah, he hasn't responded. Like, what? <laughs> so, all yeah. right. Looking forward to it, but first of all, just want to, re- or last leave whichever you want to call it uh thank you both so much appreciate the time that you spent here talking about it and looking forward to it as always at old town and we'll be right back to wrap up the dave holly hour in just a moment 
Sure, they have darts, and you've heard me talk about how ruggedly handsome the trivia host is, but all caps fun never stops at the Sky Lounge and Tea. And fun is best had with your friends enjoying live entertainment, as in live and local. Yeah, the Sky Lounge believes in giving you the best bands, solo artists, and comedians from the area. The Neo Johnsons, Elizabeth Hunstead, Skylar Volks, as well as many others. And a great staff will make sure you enjoy your fun at the Sky Lounge in T-South Dakota. From the Dipsy Doodle Studios at the world headquarters of Big D Entertainment, a 40-square-foot home studio in the middle of America, it's Dave Holly. Thanks again to those great guests, Alita Wendells and Matt Douglas and Mike Richards. And, of course, thank you for listening, downloading, sharing, following on social media, and your overall support of this show. If you haven't so far, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, which automatically gets you entered for Pizza with a Podcaster. For all 165 episodes now, go online at DaveHollyHour.com. As the Sioux Falls Arts Council says, together we art. As Arts South Dakota says, home is where the art is. As I say, put some art in your heart. Remember, I'm Dave Holly, and for me, every day is a holly day. The Dave Holly Hour has been brought to you by Posh Boutique, The Sky in Tea, XL Chiropractic, Quality Nails, Jesse Moffat Entertainment, and Sonny's Pizzeria. If you would like to contribute to the continued success of this podcast, simply buy Dave a cup of coffee. Go to DaveHollyHour.com and look for a coffee cup icon in the lower left. Don't forget to stay up to date on the show on Twitter and Instagram. Follow the Dave Holly Hour on Facebook and you'll be automatically entered in our Pizza with a Podcaster contest. The Dave Holly Hour is produced in the Dipsy Doodle Studios by Big D Entertainment. Thanks for listening 